Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to look at what's called the orthogonal complement. The orthogonal complement of could be a space, space s, a space s, or just the orthogonal complement of two vectors or three vectors, it doesn't really matter. But first you need to know what that is. And I'm going to go back to our picture here, our picture of the four fundamental spaces. So we have the column space of A, oops, the column space of A transpose, and that we said is perpendicular to the null space of A. And those are orthogonal, meaning any vector in the column, the row space is perpendicular to any vector in the null space of A. So what we would say is we would say the orthogonal complement, orthogonal complement, complement of, it doesn't matter, we'll write the null space, of the null space of A is all vectors perpendicular perpendicular to the null space of A. Well, we already know what that is. So all the, vec the perpendicular null space of A is the row space, the column space of A transpose. And we write this as the, the following. The, or it's written or denoted, denoted as, if I want the orthogonal complement of the null space, I would write it N of A perp. That's what that, that's just the, when the perpendicular sign is put up into the exponent form, it's read as perp. So the note is, so N, the, the perp of the null space of A is the column space of A transpose. Okay. Now, we can do this again. We also know this is true for the column space and the left null space. But I want to just show you how, how um, once you realize this, what an amazing tool this is. So let, let S be the space spanned by spanned by the vectors. Oh, I don't know. How about, I'm going to write these as row vectors. Uh, one, two, three, and how about uh, zero, one, two. How about that? Let's try it. Well, right away, what do you know? Let's just do a little bit of thought. The, the space spanned by those are, um, oh, you know what, let's, let's make it more interesting. That's not interesting. Make it, make it worth our while. One, two, three, zero, there we go. And the vector, how about zero, one, two, three. There we go, that's gonna be more interesting, there. So let's find the space spanned by these. Well, what are these first off? If you have two vectors, then they're going, the linear combinations or the span of those two vectors can only be a plane. In this case, so right now S, S is a plane, a plane in R4. Now think about that. So a plane is a two dimensional structure. S is a, f or I'm sorry, R, but these two this but S is in four dimensions. So if we're going to find the set of all vectors that are perpendicular to that plane in R four, we're it should be a, it should have dimension two. It should fill all of R four. So how would we do that? Well, we do that by just looking at our picture. This this picture is is so helpful because if we take if we were to take these as our row vectors, 
and then we were to find the null space of that matrix, what would we have? We would have the set of all vectors perpendicular to that. So find, let's do that, find s perp. And that, then we would have all of R4. We could then write a basis for R4 based on that. So here we go. So let's just start with this. So the, um, we're going to start with the matrix. 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. And let's take this down to R, which isn't going to take a whole lot of time. So how about we're going to take row 1 and we're going to subtract 2 row 2s off of that. So I have uh, 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, 0 minus 6, and then 0, 1, 2, 3. And there it is. There it is. Now uh, I'll just review this. Remember to find this space. Now I'm predicting that that my space is going to be 2D, two-dimensional. Another plane where all the vectors in that plane are orthogonal to all these first two vectors. So let's see if I come up with two or if I come up with not two, in my, then I have a problem. So let's see. <laughs> uh, so in this case, let's see, x1 is equal to 1x3 plus 6x4s, and we have that the vector x2, or the component of x2 is equal to minus 2x3s, um, minus 3x4s, and we also have that x3 is free, and so is x4. Those are our independent variables. So if you remember, the vector of x, or x in the null space, is equal to, remember it has components, it has an x1, an x2, an x3, and an x4. Well, we've already solved for those. So let's just write those answers in. So this is going to be uh, 1x3 plus 6x4. It's going to be minus 2x3 minus 3x4s. We're going to have an x3, and if you want, you can put a 0x4 in there if that helps. We're going to have a 0x3, but we're going to have a 1x4. Well, this, this is a sum of vectors based on x3s and x4s, and I think I have just enough room to squish this in. So this is going to be, um, I'm not sure I do here. So I think it's going to be tight, but we'll make it fit. x3 times the vector of 1, minus 2, 1, 0, plus x4 times the vector of, this is going to be close, 6, minus 3, 0, 1. So if you wanted, we could call this, we could call this, we could call this x3 special solution 1 plus x4 special solution 2. And there we go. We have a dimension of 2. We started with two independent vectors. We found two more independent vectors that are also orthogonal. And we have found s perp. So to write that, to write that, I would, um, I'm going to come over here. Need to erase all that good work, but s perp is the span is the span of the vector one minus two one zero and the vector six minus three zero one. There we go. We've done it. That is s perp. Now, if you're on a test, you're on a test, and you're wondering, am I, am I comfortable with that answer? What could you do? Well, you would just check. You would just see is if if both of these, if s1 and s2, are perpendicular to the original vectors. And let's just try one. For example, if I take if I take the vector one, two, three, zero. 
with 1 minus 2, 1, 0. If I get 0, then it worked. And you can check all those combinations. But that's going to give me a 1 minus a 4 plus a 3. And there it is. There's your 0. And you can check each one. They should all be 0. And that's how you find the orthogonal complement. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.